If you're shooting with an infrared converted Nikon digital camera that happens to be unable to set the white balance properly in IR images, you basically end up with JPEGs and RAWs that look like this, which is completely unacceptable and there's not much you can do with these images other than just turn them to black and white. And if you've purchased one of our uh, color filters, then you definitely won't be able to take advantage of some of the uh, basically uh, differences in color between the foliage and the sky to be able to do some of the color manipulations. Fortunately though you can use you can capture in RAW and use uh, Nikon Capture NX2 in order to properly white balance your images but first I'd like to show you why Photoshop will not set the proper white balance nor will Lightroom. As I'm sure you'd agree, shooting RAWs is much better than shooting JPEGs, whether you're taking IR images or normal images. And that's just because RAW, ca RAW files retain a lot more information, the actual information straight from the sensor. So there's a lot more room to be able to manipulate the image without affecting quality, and you can actually be able to extract more detail and more information from those than if you were to capture JPEGs. Unfortunately, shooting RAWs in IR converted cameras it complicates things a little bit, especially if you're using Lightroom or Photoshop. And let me explain. Basically, when you're shooting a JPEG, since it's already an image captured and there is nothing that Photoshop needs to interpret in order to be able to view it as all the information is provided within the file itself. So this, for example, is a JPEG file uh, straight from the camera from a Nikon D5000 uh, and with the white balance properly set. As you can see, you know, we have the red in the sky as we need to. This is from a super color filter, by the way. And then we have the cyan and the foliage, which we can later invert in order to get the nice blue sky and the yellow foliage. Now, let's go ahead and open the raw converter. And l let's open the raw version of this exact same file. As you can see, although the white balance is set to as shot, which is basically, you know, to the preset white balance, uh, it's not registering correctly, the image. You know, it's overly red in the sky, but, you know, there's practically no color in the foliage, which is not what we want. Now, as you can see, the temperature slider has already been dragged all the way to the left and cannot for go any further and you know you can take the tint all the way to the left or to the right it's not going to make a difference because you know there's pretty much no room no more room to make any further adjustments it's just outside of the range we can try the white balancing tool the little white balance eyedropper tool and click say on the sand you know it gets a little better but not much, not by much at all, and as you can see, completely different than what the actual white balance was set in the JPEG for. And that's a real problem because without a proper white balance, you won't be able to get that channel swap color image that you know, you know that you can get that you're supposed to get from these filters. So let's go ahead and uh, open up this file in Photoshop real quick. And let's go ahead and try to do that channel swap. Let's go to image adjustments and channel mixer. Let's go ahead and make a, for the red channel, let's type in 0 for blue 100 and then let's go ahead to the blue output channel for blue 0 and for red 100. And that's pretty much the image that you get which is completely different from what you're supposed to expect from this type of a filter conversion. Let's go ahead and do that same thing with the original JPEG Okay, 0 for red, 100 for blue, and then 0 for blue, 100 for red. Now, that's quite a difference, isn't it? There's much more information in the foliage, which is balance, balanced with the sky, which is what you want. So you can adjust and manipulate those individual elements later to your liking. Unfortunately, you cannot do this as well with this particular image because it's got a... Uh, you know, a blue cast to it, and there's very little information in the foliage as far as color, color is concerned. So using Photoshop for your raw captures off of IR cameras is definitely out of the question because it's unable to process the white balance properly. Now, the same thing occurs when you use Photoshop Lightroom as well. Basically, you know, they're pretty much the same 
the, the, have the same backhand and you cannot drag, drag the slider any further in order to get the properly white balanced image. Same deal if you use the white, the white balance eyedropper tool. Let's say select sand for the best uh, white balance. Again, it looks completely different than our JPEG counterpart. So both Photoshop and Lightroom do not work well at all with IR converted raw capture files. So I would definitely suggest if you're only, um, if you only have access to one of these programs to capture in JPEG or I uh, highly recommend downloading uh, and using Nikon Capture NX or uh, Canon Photo, Digital Photo Professional. And of course the Canon Digital Photo Professional is a free program while the Capture NX um, you know, does cost like a hundred something dollars. But you can always download a 60 day trial to give it a go before you just make your decision. Let's go ahead and open these same files in Nikon Capture NX2. Let's open the JPEG first, and of course this looks as it should, and now let's open the other one. This is the raw version. Now, uh, when I captured this image, it was basically set to, I think it was saved, let me see here. Yeah, it was saved, it was set as a daylight white balance, so obviously the white balance is incorrect. So what we want to do is we want to set the white balance, and watch the difference that this program makes compared to Photoshop or Lightroom. So basically let's go ahead and set the color temperature using the gray point and it gives you an, an option to either select by a single point or use a marquee sample. First let's use the single point. Let's set start so that way we get the eyedropper and let's try the same thing as we tried in Photoshop and Lightroom using sand uh, to make our selection. Wow! What a difference! completely different result than we received when we did the same exact click in Lightroom and Photoshop. This is different than the original white balance that we have in a JPEG, but it is much closer and much better than you would have received when you were shooting, uh, excuse me, using Lightroom or Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and control Z this and I'll use the marquee sample. Uh, which basically allows you to make a selection of, of a certain area of the image. We're going to go ahead and use the overall image in this one. So let's go ahead and click start so we can start this and let's select the overall image. This takes a few seconds while it does its thing. Now there's another result. It's basically the same white balance as we have set in the JPEG is except that it's a little darker for the exposure, which can easily be adjusted with the other settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go, drown, go down to the quick fix section and drag the exposure up a little bit. Let's see how much do we need. Okay, somewhere around there. So if you look at the previous image and this image, they look pretty much the same. So there you have it. Um, you know, Capture an X2 for the Nikon it works much better than Photoshop, and you can actually get much better results with your RAWs. Oftentimes, much better results as far as white balance is concerned than even if you were shooting JPEGs in camera with the uh, preset white balance feature. This JPEG image was captured with the Canon T3i camera with the super color filter. And as you can see, the same thing is happening. Basically, with a JPEG, Photoshop is able to display it just fine with the proper white balance. Now, let's go ahead and open the raw version of the same file. As you can see, the, the image is a lot different. Than the, photo sh than the JPEG version. The white balance is completely off. So if we were to use the same white balancing dropper tool on the sandy area, basically the image doesn't change at all. This is pretty much as good as it gets, which is not what we expected as you can see. So therefore Photoshop does not work well with Canon's or Nikon versions of the RAW files. Alright, so let's open up the same files in uh, Canon Digital Photo Professional. Let's open the JPEG really quick. As you can see, both are displaying the correct white balance as they should. Let's bring this over here for you guys. See, it it uh, seems to open separate windows. I gotta drag them <laughs> in their little recording area. Okay, so basically, this is the JPEG version. As you can see, it's 
as it should, which is pretty obvious. That's what we wanted. That's what we expected. Let's go ahead and open the raw version. So what we can do is basically use this eyedropper tool for white balancing tool and click on the sand area and you guys can click around anywhere you like um, you know to play around because it does provide different white balances depending on where you click so let's go ahead and click on the sand again so as you can see the you know the white balance is is able to be set and pretty much anywhere you like and the program has absolutely no problem with keeping up with adjusting these white balances as you go along and of course that's not what happens when you use Photoshop or Lightroom so therefore if you're using RAWs it's highly recommended that you use Digital Photo Professional for your RAW conversion